Welcome back to my YouTube channel, guys. Today, I thought it would be fun to talk about what it's really like in winter in New Zealand. Being that I'm from the Midwest in the US, I am used to cold temperatures. And I thought today I'd take a little bit of time to compare what it's like living in winter in New Zealand compared to what it used to be like for me in the States. So you're not gonna wanna miss this video, so subscribe below. Here we go. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare.com is a wonderful online community where creatives can get together and learn from each other. So check it out, Skillshare.com. Winter in New Zealand, let's talk about it. Now, I don't spend a lot of Julys, which is the middle of winter in New Zealand. Uh, I generally try to go back to the U.S. in July because that is a wonderful time of year to be in the Midwest. Uh, but, you know, due to traveling restrictions and COVID, I have not been able to get back. So I have been stuck in New Zealand during the winter. But let's talk about what winter is like. Is it quite different than it is in the Midwest U.S.? Definitely there are a lot of things different. Okay, before we get talking into the differences between the winters in New Zealand and the Midwest of the US, uh, let's talk about what the temperature actually is in July in New Zealand. So New Zealand has three main cities, Auckland, Wellington, Christchurch. So let's just start there. Obviously there are farther, so Auckland is in the North Island and it's farther north and there's also um, many cities north of there which are going to be warmer. But on average, Auckland is about 11 degrees Celsius or 54 degrees Fahrenheit on average in July. Now, if you go farther down the North Island, you get to the bottom tip is Wellington where I live and the average temperature is nine degrees Celsius and 48 degrees Fahrenheit. But that it doesn't account for all the wind. <laughs> it's a very windy area, and so the wind can make it much colder, but that's the average temperature in July. Now, if you head down to the South Island, and this is probably more of the northern part of the South Island, is Christchurch. And that average temperature is about 6 degrees Celsius, 40 three degrees Fahrenheit. And so you can kind of see that it's not really that bad. <laughs> if you're from the Midwest like I am, when we, we are used to freezing, we are used to way below zero, we are used to just like, you guys don't even understand how cold it is in the winter in the Midwest. And then I'm not even from Canada, so like it's even colder in Canada. So that's an idea of temperatures. Obviously, if you go farther south down to Invercargill, it gets a bit colder. Queenstown, and then when you're dealing with snow, uh, then that's different too if you're living in the mountains. And so, you know, that kind of affects your daily life and your driving and your shoveling and that sort of thing. But generally, where I'm from in Wellington, it is um, not really too bad <laughs> in terms of like how cold it gets. Uh, it definitely rains more uh, in the winter time and the wind, you know, depending on if it's a windy day. So it can be kind of feel a bit dreary, which is what the winters feel like in Wisconsin. For me, they feel really dreary, but it feels dreary from like December, sometimes November, depending on the kind of year you have all the way until like March, <laughs> it feels really dreary. So it's a really long time to be living without um, a lot of sun and a lot of green. One thing that's great about New Zealand is that the green doesn't go away. <laughs> the bush, the greenery, it's, you know, it just doesn't get cold enough where everything has to die and everything has to fall off. Now, obviously different parts of the country that varies, you know, um, like in the South Island, you, you know, trees will lose their leaves depending on the type of tree and, and that sort of thing. But like in general, my experience living in Wellington compared to the U.S., so much nicer in the winter. One of the reasons why I think it seems not so bad in the winter in New Zealand, obviously it's warmer. Like if my average temperature is in the 40s in Wellington is a way warmer than what it is uh, in Wisconsin, where it could be like the windshield could be like 15 below, which is like so cold. You guys like so cold. Let me just describe so cold. So like you go out to your car, there is so much snow that you then have to shovel everything. But because it snowed like 10 o'clock at night and now it's 6 a.m. in the morning, it is like solid ice. So trying to shovel that is quite hard and sometimes impossible. So you can't get your car out. So this is not what you want to be doing at six o'clock in the morning. You have to have your face covered, your hands covered. If they're not, it's just like, it feels it like, it like hurts. It hurts. 
And then, you know, I've had to scrape some frost off of my car here in New Zealand, even this week, but like, mm, like that, <laughs> the frost. So like we have like, I don't even have special equipment. I think I use a tennis racket. <laughs> I did use a tennis racket. And then, but we have scrapers in the US and the scrapers are nice. And sometimes they come with a nice glove and, and you, and it's, it's work. It is a solid ice on your windshield. And then you have to run your car for probably like 20 minutes just to get it to warm up and to start to defrost the, um, the windows. And it's just, it's a whole thing. And then it's so cold and you're just like trying to get out and then you're getting the car and you're like so cold. So yeah really different. It's really miserable in the winters in the Midwest. And so every year that I live there, I was like, why in the world do I live here? Like, I hate it. Like you love it because you have community there. Your family is there. Your friends are there, you know, so you love it. But then you always, as soon as I hit winter, be like, why do I live here? Not sure. But one thing that makes it so much better being in New Zealand in the winter is that you will have glorious days. There, you could go through like a week or two of solid rain, sometimes some sleet, but everything melts right away. And, but it's, you have a beautiful day. Like today we're having a beautiful day here. I just took a video, I'll show it, of, uh, of what it looks like from my window where I'm working right now. It's just a stunner of a day, as they would say here. <laughs> uh, what do they call it? A cracker of a day. It feels weird even coming out. Not used to that word yet, but that's what they'd say here. It's like cracker of a day in Wellington. And they always say that you can't beat Wellington on a good day. So it's beautiful. So I think that that just makes winter um, more bearable for me. Like I, instead of going like four or five months without any nice days or any nice sun and just dreary and everything's brown and there's, there's no leaves on the trees and nothing's growing, that it just does affect you okay but here when every once in a while i have a stunner of a day <laughs> or a cracker of a day sorry <laughs> um it's just not anything i would ever say in the u.s but um <laughs> it just makes it bearable like we can go out and we can walk around and we can be in t-shirts and it's pretty warm and it's nice and it just the sun's out and it just makes you happier i'm sure there's all this science behind all of that and that's not the point of this but it just really makes it bearable. So in the winters, in Wellington anyway, you'll have really nice sunny days every once in a while and it really makes it bearable. I cannot continue this video without bringing up the fact that the biggest problem with winter in New Zealand is the fact that people live cold indoors. That's the best way for me to say it. It's a shock to an American and probably to other people from other countries that are cold like Canada to come here and realize how cold people live indoors. So they're getting so much better with the way that they're building houses and their insulation and their double glazed windows and central heating. But I'm telling you for years and years, they just lived cold inside. So like my first rental house was really cold and it was like, I'm turning everything on yet I'm not warm. And yeah, that was an experience that you just don't live warm. Like people are always wearing lots of clothes. Like it's just normal to like put on lots of layers in the bedrooms. You have electric blankets on all the beds. It's like not survivable depending on how chilly your house is to not have electric blanket because it is, it is not, sometimes the house isn't insulated. It's not built well. It's to the point where it's like just as cold outside as it is inside. It's not really a whole lot different. And so just imagine that and imagine sleeping in that. So it's like, imagine sleeping in like 40 degrees and like, it's just never really, like really warm. And so that's really the difference when you first come here and you're like, okay, like when I go to work, it's cold. When I go, you know, to different, you're just expecting to be cold. Like things just are not heated because heat is very expensive. Electric heat, gas heat, Everything's really expensive because, you know, we're on a big island, basically. <laughs> so it is cold. And so if you are traveling here or moving here, just know that people, just their level of expectation in terms of living cold is different. <laughs> they are ha they are used to, I don't know they're happy with, but they're used to living cold. And they just really don't know any different. So if you're a New Zealander and you think, boy, she's wimpy. Like, what is she talking about? Well, it's because you don't know any different. <laughs> so like we have freezing cold temperatures in the Midwest, in Canada, in you know Minnesota, whatever, but we don't live cold inside. It's always 
72 degrees Fahrenheit inside. <laughs> you know, like if you go to work, it's warm. If you go to the stores, it's warm. If you're just traveling around, it's warm. Here, it's not. You don't know. Some places will be really warm because it'll be like one room with like a heat pump coming in. It's like really warm. Like my son keeps wearing shorts to school because it's so hot in the classroom. But then when it's outside, whew, you know. And so that's the other problem is that when I moved here the first time, the houses are like you're used to heating like one room. And like it's hard to function in a house being in one room. Like you have to go in and cook dinner or meal. You have to go in and do laundry. You got to go clean up something and you're not real motivated because it's really cold out there <laughs> and so you would tend to stay in like one room or two rooms of the house that have most of the heat and so unless you're in a house that has central heat I the last two houses I've rented I've insisted on central heating because I just it just makes it way more bearable in the winter and especially since I've been here all winter it's been great <laughs> but you know I've adjusted a little bit anyway but in the first house that we were in we had Oh, it was cold. It was like an older built house and it didn't have very good insulation and the windows like didn't close all the way. And so it was just cold and it was on top of a hill. And whew, I remember cooking breakfast at like 630 in the morning because I had little kids. I had my winter coat on, my winter hat on, I had gloves on and I'm cooking like, <laughs> because it's cold. So the other room had a fireplace, which was really nice and nice and warm in there. But like it wasn't, even though some heat was coming in, it just wasn't that warm. So some rooms were electric heat, some rooms were gas heat, some, you know, and then it was always cold upstairs where all the bedrooms were. So we got everybody electric blankets. And one other thing that I have never seen until I came to New Zealand were these hot water bottles. Uh, we found those in the closet in the house that we were renting. And I was like, what the heck is that? It's like this big rubber water bottle that you fill with hot water and you put it in your covers and it heats up your bed and it works great i actually really like it i just had never seen it until i came to new zealand and i love them but and my kids loved them and they would request them and it's like a whole chore then to do at night just so you know um but it's it's great and they're really cool but it's like a little nerve-wracking the first time you try it because you think like i'm putting like this huge amount of water in my bed I just, you know, don't want any to leak out, <laughs> you know, and you kind of like, it's like a little bit mental to put water in your bed, but got used to it, love those, use those um, often when we had those. And so those are another great resource, but it's just not something <laughs> that I've ever seen until I had come here, uh, you know, maybe at my grandmother's house, like something that they used to use in the old farmhouse, but like, yeah hot water bottles in the bed. Skillshare is exactly how it sounds. It is a platform where creatives come together and just in community can share skills with each other. I personally love this platform because now I've become a YouTuber over the last year and have a lot of skills to develop. And so there's so many great classes on Skillshare that helps you do that because I think that learning is lifelong and so great to do it in a community of creatives. If you check out Skillshare.com, these are some courses that I would recommend. I would recommend YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, and Edit by Marquise Brunley. He's like amazing. I was so easy to watch him, so interesting. And he gave me some really good tips on how to shoot some videos better. The second class that I would highly recommend is if you're on Instagram, which we all are, is a video on how to tell your story in like one minute or less on Instagram by Halise Harvez. And it's so good. And she is just so wonderful to listen to and so calm. And I really learned uh, some really good techniques with jump shots. And if you're at all involved in the marketing world like I am, you all know Gary Vanderchuk. He has a great video on here about context is key when talking about social media. I highly recommend watching this. Everything is so good that he always talks about in learning how each social platform has its own context and how you need to present information differently across different contexts. Skillshare is built as an online community for learning. That's all it is. There's no ads on this platform. You just go in and you can just learn it. You just learn what's convenient for you, whether you're just, I'm, I do it when I'm waiting for my kids out of sports or if I'm on the bus or if I'm just traveling around or going for a walk, I'll just listen to it in my ear and it's just great. It's a great way to constantly upscaling your skills and your creative and getting motivated to try a new thing. There is no reason to not try Skillshare today. 
click on the link below in my description and you're going to get one month of Skillshare for free. Normally you get 14 days. If you click on my link below, you'll get one month for free. So there's no reason to not try it today. So go check out Skillshare.com. So in the winter, there's fun winter sports in New Zealand, especially uh, in the mountains where skiing and snowboarding are a big thing here and just beautiful. I had the pleasure of going uh, to the Queenstown Wanaka area and went skiing there last July and it was stunning. It was so beautiful. Like even if you don't love, love skiing, like just being on the mountain and doing some skiing is so amazing. It's just so beautiful. And so I highly recommend checking out those places. If you are heading down to Queenstown, uh, click the link in my description is I have went to Queenstown recently and a lot of businesses have provided um, my community discounts on places to stay, activities to do, especially if it's like a crappy day and you can't go skiing, looking for something else to do, go get stretched out at the yoga studio, lots of fun things for families and kids. So check out the link in my, my bio and you can do some fun things if you are in the Queenstown Wanaka area, which I know a lot of people travel this time of year. But anyway, just so many fun things. They have ice skating, um, you know, but it's like, you can still do like, some people even go in the water. Like I know friends that have been surfing last weekend that they got the full, you know, wetsuit on hat part and the feet part and it, you know, keeps them warm. And then as northern, the farther north you go, you can do a lot more just kind of normal, not wintry type things. But there's always school holidays in the middle of winter or in July generally. So the kids have two weeks off. And so what do they do? Like it's, it's really popular. There's like indoor pools here. Some have slides, some just have big pools with like big blow up things that you can do. And so there's a lot of like, you can still swim indoors uh, in the winter. Uh, that's a big activity that my kids always like to do. And then there's just all the little different indoor things that you can do, go bowling you know, but it's still warm enough where you can go mini golfing. So it's great because it's like, it's a little bit colder, but it doesn't keep you from doing just a ton of things. So um, yeah, and it gets dark at 530. So it kind of slows your life down a little bit where you get a break because it's not light out. And so, you know, it limits what you can do anyway outside. And so there's a lot of different options to do indoors in the winter. Okay, well, I feel like I can keep talking about winter forever, but I think I, that's the gist of it. But I thought I'd share a personal story as we end today. Uh, yeah, so when I, like I said, I moved here the first time, had a great house, but like was freezing in the winter time. And I didn't know really how to deal with it because we had like a, a fireplace in one room, which kept that warm, but like I was freezing in the kitchen and just had electric heat and then just like various heating, you know, it was kind of patchy. And then the windows never closed and it was windy and shaky and it was crazy, but like, yeah, so I lived cold and I just thought I was doing something wrong. So if you are new here uh, or you're coming here and you're like, ah, maybe I'm doing something wrong, you're not. People just live cold here. And so I learned and I adjusted, uh, but I, even to the point where I had an electrician come over like, is this working? <laughs> because I feel like I'm paying for heat, but yet I'm not warm. <laughs> and so he was like, no, nah, everything's working. I think it's just, you know, cold. And so like, I just want to make sure I was using it right because I'm just, you know, everything's kind of new. But um, I did get a call from my, here's a personal story. I did get a call. <laughs> Uh, from my electric company who called me ahead of me getting my bill and said, hey, we just want to give you a heads up that you're getting a pretty large bill this month. And I was like, oh, this is not good. If they're calling you to tell you it's going to be big, it's going to be big. <laughs> and I had no idea because I didn't know, you know, like when you're not used to having to adjust, uh, you know, like it, it's not unlimited, you know, like it was an adjustment when we first came here because we we're used to unlimited internet and then it wasn't unlimited, you know, in 2013 when we came. Um, and so like learning how to limit and like, we just didn't know how to do that very well. And so, yeah, my first electric bill was $1,200. I was like, I got to get a job. I can't afford to live here. <laughs> I mean, it was outrageous. They let me pay it off, you know, and yeah, that was a little bit of a shock. So yep, not turning it on anymore, understanding that I don't do that. And so learning that kind of situation. So just be warned that depending on your house, you could be living cold. If you're in New Zealand or you're traveling and you're doing an Airbnb, it might not be warm. Maybe ask about the heating options, <laughs> but like, yeah. So that was my story, $1,200. They were very nice about it and let me pay it off over time. But yeah, it was a bit of a shock. And like when you're learning to move here and you're wondering if you can afford it and you're going through different seasons, it was definitely a bit stressful. 
but just know that it, that it is expensive and that you can do a budgeting program with your electric company as well um, if that makes things easier but yeah so that's me in new zealand in the winter well i hope you enjoyed the video today guys please comment below share your winter stories what it's been like for you living uh here in the winter whether you're a new zealander or you're a visitor or you have uh, just moved here from a different country. Share your stories below. I would love to hear them. Uh, and also, I just want to highlight that I do have an American recipe book coming out using New Zealand ingredients. So if you are living in New Zealand and you want to know